Hello, Dad, can I have a computer? What you need, son, is a f***ed up the hooter. Computer's gonna cost me a leg and an arm. Not the Toshiba pack. Stay calm. Cost me a bomb. The things you need later. They're all thrown in. Keep your shirt on, Peter. What happens next year when it's out of date? No chance, Dad. This is MSX, mate. If all that's true, I'm the Queen of Sheba. And say hello, Tosh, to a new Toshiba. Okay, before I start today's setup guide for the Open MSX emulator from Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. That just means you'll get notified every time I release a setup guide, which is almost every day these days. And it also helps out my channel too. So we're looking at Open MSX emulator today. Around a year ago, I released a setup guide, which I've been meaning to update for Blue MSX. Open MSX is just as good, if not a bit better, and a lot of people in the MSX community swear by this emulator. So what do we need for this emulator? We actually need some BIOS or firmware files in order for say disk drives to work. We need some games and of course we need the emulator and that's what we're going to start with. So we're going to head over to the OpenMSX website. Lots of information just here. It's a very active emulator development team as well as a very active community these days in the MSX gaming programming. So what we're going to do is go to the download section. Now there's a couple of different versions of this. We got a 64-bit version and we have also got the options download 32-bit version. If you're not sure which version to go for, if you're not sure which version to go for, the easiest way to find this out is just go to your search bar and type in system information. Just here under system type, you'll find out what type of computer you've got. For me, I've got Times 64 base PC, which tells me I've got a 64-bit computer. If you've got a 32-bit, it will say times 86 base PC. Now that we've established this, we've also got the choice of how we want to use OpenMSX. We can either choose to install this to the computer, or we can actually download it as a portable version. If you want to install this to your computer, then download either the 32-bit install or the 64-bit install. For me, I'm going to be using the portable version for, of course, the 64-bit. So I'm going to download the zip. Next up, we're going to need some games. Now, for MSX, just like a lot of microcomputers from back in the day, we got a choice between cassette tapes, cartridges, and also disk images. Now, I'm going to go into that. I'm showing you itch.io because you can download a range of different games here. Most of these are free. Some of them you might have to buy. But what we're going to do is actually take a look at the games what I have got. So if I go into my games folder, we got three different types of media just here for MSX. We have got the ROM file, which means this is a cartridge based file. Next down, we got Spellbound. This says .cas on the end. This tells us this is a cassette tape image. And finally, we got .dsk, which is a floppy disk image or a disk image. So like I say, we got a few different choices how we load our games. Now, by far, your ROM images are going to be much quicker than, say, your cassette tape images. And we also got .dsk disk images. Again, they're going to be a lot quicker than the cassette images. Now, if you like the nostalgia of loading cassette tape, then download your cassette tapes. But regardless, we can use any three of these media. So what we're going to do then is also take a look at the firmware needed. So here in Britain, the most famous model of MSX was the Toshiba models. If I go into my Toshiba folder, I've got firmware and I've got ROMs just here. So the reason for this is that once we're in OpenMSX, we can actually use Toshiba as a system to use. So I'm going to get into that in a minute. So I've downloaded MSX as portable and here's the contents inside. I'm going to just create a new folder on my desktop. So if I right click on my desktop, new folder, I'm going to just call this MSX. It doesn't really matter what you call this. And then I'm going to drag those contents inside that MSX folder. 
Like I say, if you choose to install it to your computer, then obviously go through the installation process. Okay, so once that's copied across, if we just close out of that zip folder, and I'm going to delete my open MSX zip folder too. If we go inside MSX, here we go. We've got a few different folders in here, and we've got the program itself. Before I go any further, if I go into the share folder, what we're going to do first of all is go into the machines folder and this is where your firmware can go or get copied for your different range of MSX models in order to boot them. So I'm going to just copy all of my Toshiba files inside of that share machines folder. And here we go. So if we come out one, we've also got a software folder. And in here, this is where I suggest you put in your games. So I'm going to put my .rom, my .cas, and my .dsk games all inside of this software folder. And this makes it easier for opening up games and seeing what's available inside of MSX. Okay, so we've now done that. So let's actually open up the emulator itself. So if we just come out. And so we're going to open msx.exe. Windows protected your PC. That's normal for Windows 11. So just go to more info. And here we go. So open MSX comes with CBIOS. This is absolutely free. And of course, CBIOS is telling us that it can only run cartridge games. For example, .roms. So what we're going to do is, first of all, check this is all working. Now, if I just use my cursor just to navigate to the menu button at the top, if I left click, from here, we got the options of cart slot A, cart slot B. For now, if I use my page up and page down buttons on my keyboard, I'm going to just press enter on slot A. And from here, this should take us direct into that MSX directory that I've created. If I just use my page down, and go into this share folder from here i'm going to just use page down again and we're going to find software and here we go so it's just narrowed down which games or programs we could use with c bios if i press enter for my ghostman game and it should then boot straight in like it's doing for us right now Okay, and if we press F11 on the keyboard, so that's going to open MSX into full screen mode. Now for this, I'm just using my arrow buttons on my keyboard and my space bar is acting as the action button. And to be honest with you, I have no idea what this game is, but it looks pretty interesting. And this one, of course, is from Itch.io. It's a fairly new game, I believe. So if I press F11 on my keyboard, so that's going to bring us back into window modes again. What we're going to do for now is just use cursor to go to menu. And what we're going to do is eject that cartridge image because when we reset OpenMSX, it's going to boot straight from this game again. So if I just press enter and I'm going to go up to eject ghostly manner, press enter. And there we go. Everything's now clear out of the OpenMSX emulator. And it's asking us to insert another game or ROM image. So what I'm going to show you next is actually how to use different models. So like I say, in Britain, for us, it was the Toshiba model, which was the very popular one. So we can change OpenMSX into different models, operating systems, that type of thing. If we just go to menu to do this, what I'm going to do is just scroll down to hardware, press enter, change machine, press enter. And because I put those firmware BIOS files in place, if I select Toshiba HX10 MSX UK, which, like I say, was most popular, press enter. And here we go. So we're now into the operating system for the Toshiba model, and it takes us straight into basic. So I've got a cassette image, and I've also got a disc image. So let's take a look at the cassette image first. I'm going to go to menu again. And for this, I'm just going to scroll down to tape deck. It says empty. If I press enter on this, 
from here i'm then going to find my tape pool folder which is going to take us into my software folder and here we go so i've got spellbound on cassette if i press enter on this and that's going to auto load for you and like I say, if you're new to 8-bit computers or anything cassette based, you'll know that cassette loading is by far the most slowest. Now if I press F12 on my keyboard, if you don't fancy the sound of the loading, then just press F12 and you can mute this. And again, like I say, if you want to go into full screen, just press F11 for this. Okay, so we're in the Spellbounds now, and it's asking us how we want to play the game. So let me just remind you that not all MSX games will take joysticks. So I'm going to just use my cursor for now to go to joystick part A, and just press space on that once it was selected. Go down to play game by pressing space. And to use a controller, it's best really to quit out of Open MSX altogether. So I've just connected my Xbox controller. If I go back into Open again and if I just set this back to the Toshiba model so hardware change machine and I'm just going to find Toshiba and here we go HX10 and now if I go to menu again I'm going to go down to hardware connectors and underneath my MSX joystick port A, we can now see Xbox Series X controllers appeared. That's good. So if we then load up the game again. So for this, I'm going to go up to Tape Deck again and select my Spellbound.cas image. Press Enter. Or at this point, I can actually use my Xbox controller. And again, by pressing F11, that's going to bring us into a full screen mode. <laughs> and we can actually change OpenMSX to boot straight into an operating system, or rather a machine of your choice, rather than it just booting straight into C BIOS, which comes with OpenMSX. So again as we can see it just by default boots straight into this we can change it so if we just go to menu and from here if we then scroll down to hardware and change machine and providing you've got the firmware and BIOS bars required you can then choose your machine so as we know uh, for me I'm using Toshiba for this so I'm going to select Toshiba HX10 if I press enter it's obviously going to change over to Toshiba, but if we close out of this and boot it back up again, it's then going to uh, boot by default into CBIOS. So to change this to default, just go to Menu and Hardware, and we're going to set Current Machine as default. If I then go down to Exit Open MSX, really Exit, yes. And if I then go to Open Open MSX again. And here we go, we're now straight into what I've just wanted as default. So that's going to bring us straight into MSX Basic. So next up, what I'm going to show you then is actually how to load disk images. So we need BIOS files and firmware files in order to use disk drives in OpenMSX. Uh, these are generally going to go into your share folder and into your machines folder so before looking at anything else let's just take a look at loading a disk image so i've already put my files for disk drive into place so to load a disk image what i need to do is go to menu and from menu i'm going to drop down to hardware and for this i'm going to go down to extensions and here we go so we got select extension to add and i'm going to be using a sony hbd f1 and as we can see, the extension has now been added. If we go back up to menu, you should then find disk drive has appeared. It's not grayed out. So if I then put my uh, .dsk game inside of disk drive A, and here's my spellbound .disk. If I press enter, I'll select this one. Now if I go up to menu and just go down to reset MSX, It should then automatically load the program. 
And as we can see, we got the bottom just here, FDD. And again, I can then use my page up and page down order to set my game up to use it with joystick. So if I press page down and press space to select joystick port A, just go down to play game. And my joystick, or my controller rather, is now working. Okay, other things we can do is actually save the load states in MSX. So if I open up... If I just very quickly just put this one over to a different type of hardware. So I'm going to go to change machine. And if I load up my game, so menu, cart slot, and I'm going to select my .rom game here. So if I just play a little bit, let's... So the game has just started loading, and what I'm going to do is save state. So if I go to menu, and just go down to save state, press enter. And then if I go back to menu again, and this time I'm going to go to load state. Okay, and finally, I'm just going to go through some video settings with you. We can really make some of these games look really awesome. So to do this, what I'm going to do is just go to menu. And if I go down to video settings, and from here, we first of all got scalar. So if I press left and right on my arrows on my keyboard, we can change it to TV, simple, scale NX, which I particularly like. So I'm going to leave it to that. We also got scale factor as default. This is going to be two times. If I press right, it's going to increase the size of the screen. So I'm going to leave that to two times for now. And we also got V-Sync. I suggest leaving this on. V-Sync eliminates screen tear, so always best to have that on. Now, if you're going to be using scan lines, which you can actually find under Scalar, which comes as part of Simple, we can actually increase scan lines to give it more depth. Uh, if I go all the way up to, say, 100%, and I go back into the operating system, as you can see, we now got scan lines Whereas if I put this down to around 60%, the scan lines will then gradually start disappearing. So that's entirely up to you. We've also got blur. So whilst we're playing a game, if you really want nostalgia, then obviously on a CRT TV, there'll be a slight bit of blur behind, say, the sprites you're playing. Now, glow, I don't really see much purpose in this, but someone might do. If I apply glow to this... Uh, the game almost comes unplayable. So what I'm going to do is actually boot up the game I've got from itch.io. So I'm going to switch this back over to a machine which supports it, which is going to be MSX2 uh, using CBIOS. And if I just open up the game again... Okay, so once the game's opened, if I go back to menu and back down to video settings, if I put glow to around 100% again, go back into the game, as you can see, this is extreme blurriness. You can't really see what's going on. So I think by the seams of it, uh, the glow effect is probably best if you do want to use it as set to around 30 to 50%. But for me, I just find this... Uh, I'm not a big fan of this one. Now, something else we can do, which is ultra cool in OpenMSX, is actually change display deform from normal to 3D. Now, if I go back into the game again and change this to full screen.
And that's it for today's Open MSX Emulator Setup Guide for a Windows PC. So, like I said at the start of the video, if you like what you see, stay hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss out on upcoming retro emulation content. Helps my channel out, plus you get setup guides as I release them almost every day. Also check out my Blue MSX Setup Guide, which I uploaded last year. If you don't get on with this emulator, then the other emulator that I covered, which is under my Micro Emulation Playlist folder, you might get on with that one instead. Anyways, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.